I'm here in Medjugorje next to um, Cross Mountain on God Friday 2023 and I'm with, what's your name? My name is George, George, George. J. Raman. Where are you from? Well, I'm living in Ireland at the moment, yeah. but my roots would be from India. From India? I have yeah. been in Kerala, you know Kerala? Uh, well, my mom is from Kerala. Your yeah. mom is from Mom's Kerala. Family. I was converted by a nun from Kerala in Germany. Oh, isn't that fascinating? Yeah. <laughs> so it is close at Cross Mountain in Medjugorje, Bosnia, no? Herzegovina. Brilliant. And you said you how many times you come and since when? So the first time I came was in 2000 and uh, ever since um, we've been coming generally about you know twice a year um, most of my wife brings mm -hmm. big groups with her you know April and October we'll certainly come once a year but most years we'll come twice Wow and since 2000 you said? since 2000 yeah That's about amazing. 23 years now so yeah. we let the mathematics to the theorems yeah, yeah. but why do you come back all the time well for us it's kind of a, a home away from home mm -hmm. And uh, well, I came the first time over here just through bizarre coincidence. It's a fabulous story, actually. Yeah. Um, I used to be a lecturer in London many, many years ago, and one of my students, he was away, and he came back, and he said he thought about me in a certain place. He didn't tell me much about uh, about the place, and he gave me a rosary. And I had that rosary in my car, hanging in the, in the rearview mirror for many, many years, without knowing what it was and what it meant. And if you forward many years after that, another friend of mine who sat in my car explains to me about this beautiful place called Medjugorje that I should go. And I was going through a bad patch in my life, having lost my mum and dad. And I wasn't really grieving properly for that loss. I didn't know how to grieve, I didn't know how to cry. But I was going through a bad patch in life myself. And this friend of mine, Jim Curran, who is a fabulous mate of mine, mm -hmm. he said I should go to this place called Medjugorje and he mm -hmm. kept on explaining to me about Mother Mary and how Mother Mary will spoil me if I come to Medjugorje. I didn't understand what he meant by that. Mm -hmm. And then when he was talking I said, is this Medjugorje talking about and the rosy was hanging in front of us all the while in the car? Well, he said, how did you get this rosy from? I said, I don't know, it's been in my car for many years. A friend, a student of mine gave me. He said, George, I'm telling you there's something there, you have to go. It's not coincidence. I'm telling you about the story. Someone." A bizarre student comes and gives you his rosary. You have to go there. And that was in 2000 I came. Um, By myself I came actually. What happened? And, and uh, it's hard to explain, but he said, don't wait for anyone. There is an, an apparition hill. You have to climb that hill all by yourself, very early in the morning, and sit there, he said. And he said, I'll never forget what Jim said, he said, um, Mother Mary will spoil you. That's all he said, she, he, she'll spoil you. I said, what do you mean, Jim? I, I can't explain, George, you have to go there. So I came 2000, it was in February, I think, and I climbed the Apparition Hill, it must be 5.30 in the morning, went up. I didn't know where I was going. It wasn't this developed those days. I went through fields, found my way, and I climbed the Apparition Hill, found the statue of Mother Mary, which is there, and I sat in front of her. It must have been about two, three hours and I just cried. I cried. <laughs> I'm getting emotional now, you know, explaining that story. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. Thing. Keep on going, yeah? Amazing. And I cried and I cried. It wasn't even crying, I was wailing. I was, you know, when, you, when, you, when, when, when your mom holds you, when you're hurt as a child, and you just let go of the pain and you cry and you cry. You know, that's the only way I can explain how I felt. And I suppose I used that opportunity to cry for my, the loss of my mum, my dad, and what I was going through my own personal life in London. A lot of le losses and, 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 and I remember coming back and uh, the, the loads of things happened in the week and uh, confessions, amazing feeling I got out of confessions. Mm -hmm. But whatever happened on that mountain, you know, kept me bringing, kept me coming back all the time. I wanted more of that. Mm -hmm. I wanted every time the same feeling. I, you know, I couldn't get more of it and I wanted to come back again and again and again. The hug of the mother. Right? Yeah, exactly, I got that mother. Yeah. So look, I'm now you know, climbing the cross mountain by myself because I don't wait. You know, I know what's up there. I know there's, there's something lovely there and I don't need anyone with me. I, 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 just, I just go. I just go because I, I get something out of it. And, and hence, you know, I come back every year, we come back every year. Um, and everyone's got various reasons as why they come back. But for me, it's that, that embrace, 
you know the, 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 the heavenly embrace yes yeah the, the warmth you get from that you know uh, and, and for that sake i keep coming back you know that's sake i keep climbing mountains you know, and what keep happened to me i came first time never left Today. <laughs> <laughs> two years now wow because i received the hack as well which i needed so desperately you know? wow so i think you needed it yes and that's why she brought you here yes you know? absolutely you pray the rosary now we do we do say the rosary at home as well every day you know um what does it bring you're a young man why do you pray rosary it's for old ladies <laughs> oh, the well, barriers. I'm, I'm actually not that young. I'm 51 years old, yeah, but uh, you're gonna be a positive. <laughs> Me too, 51. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. um, now look, rosary is something which was given to me when I was a young boy myself in India. My mom, my mom would be very spiritual and religious, you know. Mm -hmm. So we were brought up in a in some shape or form to say the rosary. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it. it Again, it's 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 very it's very subjective, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know what rosary means to me is so, so different to other people. For me, it's very special. It's it, it's it's a little connection you've got. That rosary is a connection to heaven, to, to heaven, heart. to Mother Mary, to uh -huh. to God. You know, Jesus, um, yeah. to Jesus. Yeah, it's a fabulous connection, and the connection is in your hand. You know, it's 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 there. It's and like people, a mobile phone. It is. It yeah. is. It's mobile you've got phone a, to heaven. Yeah, it's an absolute network you have there. <laughs> Wi-Fi network. Wi-Fi. Yeah, Wi-Fi. Yeah, and uh -huh. and it's in your in, in in your hand, and it doesn't take much time. You know, it's not a big ask. You know, they don't ask too much, and they just say the rosary, just say some prayers, and and well, the Mary's asking for those prayers, and why wouldn't we? You, know? you pray together. You said. Yeah, you know, my wife always said, you know, a family that prays together stays together. Is it like that? Yeah, so family who always come together and pray together, they say they stay together. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, you know, the kids and my wife and I, we, we, we say the rosary, um, and it's a, it's a powerful healing in it. You know, uh, uh, there's a lovely togetherness in it, and, and you can bring your lovely intentions in the, during the rosary time. And You know, somebody said, like it's... <laughs> Um, easier staying, staying, being naked in front of your partner than praying together. Is that because it's so intimate? Something it, it very, is. very intimate. Oh How my do you God. feel doing that with your wife? How is that? Look, I suppose it's, it's, you know, when 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 you all have the same intention, mm -hmm. you know, and we're all there together as a family. There's a lovely fellowship in that, mm -hmm. um, and there's there's something beautiful about being vulnerable together. You know, it's not that I'm vulnerable and you're seeing my vulnerable. No, we're all vulnerable together. You know, I'm no, I'm no bigger than you. There's no pride in it. You know, when when that's the feeling that everyone has during the time of rosary, again, it's magical. You know, um, and and we're all just normal human beings who who, you know, who, who shouldn't feel. You know, I don't know. Kind of naked. naked. There's nothing. No, they, they, it's it's just vulnerability it's and beauty. And, the vulnerability. Yeah. Because you connect to a person Absolutely. through your vulnerability. Absolutely. You know? It's when you think you're not vulnerable. That's when pride kicks in. Yeah. You know, we're all very vulnerable. You know, and and we all have a very finite time in this world. We only have about God knows how many years left. Mm -hmm. And that's how vulnerable we are. We are born vulnerable. We die. Well, we live like very. Jesus on the cross. Yeah. He showed it. Yes. The beauty of it. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. So look. Yeah. Life is vulnerable. Um, and 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 whatever little time we have, why don't we sh openly show our vulnerability, and and and, yes. and 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 to God? Who else are we showing this one? It's to God, you know. It's That's not what a big... I said. Told a friend today. I said I like you because you have the same vulnerability. Yeah. I can connect to you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Beautiful. And you said confession may played a big part. Oh yeah. How, why? What is confession for you? Look, um, for years and years I didn't confess because um, I was scared. Uh, I was scared because I, I thought I'd, I, I'd done so much sin that I, I've gone beyond confession, <laughs> I've gone beyond redemption, I've gone beyond saving. So it's no point going confession. I'll, I'll die and someday I'll meet God and I'll, I'll tell sorry God. You know, I, was, I was scared to go and put myself in front of another human being. Mm -hmm. But then it took me many years to learn actually the person, the priest who sat there, he's just not a human being. He's there as Christ, he's there listening to your sins, he's there, you know, in, 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 as God, he's there, you know. And that changed my perspective. So when I came over here, 
Again, Jim said, you know, go for confession, George. It's very powerful in Medjugorje. Mm -hmm. So I did. I, 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 I drummed up all the courage I could possibly get. And I, and I said a wee prayer and I went to confession. And, uh, and again, people don't understand the amount of healing is in there. When you open up your heart and when you say, Father, I have sinned. Even when you use the word sin, you just show your vulnerability and, and you cry. And I cried, but I did, again, I cried, cried, cried because I felt ashamed. There's a lot of guilt and shame in that. And, and, and I wanted to leave it all there. And I didn't want to feel guilty and, and shameful anymore of all the sins I've done. And, and, and even the priest was fabulous. He said, you don't have to tell me everything, George. You know, because even a few things you say, everything is absolved prior to the time you, you came inside. Everything. You don't have to keep thinking about every single minute detail. God knows everything. So the amount of healing I got just sat there and I was crying. I didn't even have to tell much sins. He just let me in silence to cry, 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 thinking about all my sins, thinking about all the, the shame and guilt I was carrying for all those years. And I felt so light coming out because I just left everything there, mm -hmm. you know, and I placed it in front of him and I, and I just sought for forgiveness, you know, and that's what I got, you know. So again, confession is for me uh, healing. You know. What would you tell people like, you know, well, 20 years didn't go to confession, they're scared to go to the priest. What would you tell them? Not to be scared. Mm -hmm. Not to be scared. One of the biggest things is people, one, they don't know how to confess. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. And second thing is they think, oh, it's gone too long. Mm -hmm. I can't go and face a priest. No, priests know that we live in this day and age where technology is taken over. We don't have time for God. We don't have time for confessions. The priest knows all this. You just have to go and say, Father, look, it's been, it's been 20 years. And be honest about it, you know. And and he helps you, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's a conversation. It's not it in is. a dark room. It, it you don't is. See the priest. Absolutely, absolutely. And the thing is, we we were brought up that way, where we always thought confession was such a big thing, and the priest was this amazingly big person, and we were always be scared going. No, you know, not to be scared. That's why I kept saying confession. If you haven't been a confession, don't be scared. You know, you're there, there's a loving person there who wants, who's waiting to hear your sins. You know, he, he's completely, you know, unconditional love is there, all right? Unconditional positive regard is what the person has and compassion, you know? God will suffer with you, God will listen to you, you know? That, that's what compassion is, isn't it? If we say I'm feeling guilty and shameful, he listens to you and he'll suffer with you. You know. So we come to the point because a lot of people think God the Father is an angry old man with a white beard and he just wants to judge us and push us to hell and that's not true. How is <laughs> no. he? How is he? He's, he's the most compassionate person. You know, we, we talk about human empathy. God yeah. has got compassion, which is way more powerful. Empathy is only you feel with someone, you know, in empathy. But with compassion, you suffer with and God suffers with you. When you say, God, you know, I'm, I'm hurting. He suffers with you, and that's compassion, you know. And God has His amazing, amazing compassion and <laughs> yeah. unconditional love, unconditional positive regard. He only has positive regard, you know, and that's unconditional. What do we do? He doesn't judge you. There's no bias. There's, it's just unconditional positive regard, you know. So, the man who doesn't judge, the man who suffers with you, why wouldn't you go to him? And why wouldn't you go and talk to him? Say, I'm sorry. You know, because he's there to forgive you, he's there to love you and, and, and embrace you, you know, it's, 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 it's beautiful confession. So, yeah, don't feel scared, just go, there's, there's, there's God waiting there to, you know. And I see you, you have like a living relationship, you have a relationship with God, Jesus, Our Lady. How can, you know, some, I, I was in Israel and I went to a synagogue and I went out, there was a Jewish guy, I said, do you have a living relationship with God? Do you feel him? Do you talk to him? You have it. Tell them, tell the people, how can you get that? I see you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have it, yeah. to be honest, but... But there is something going on, I see it in your face. Yeah, yeah. look, it's, it's, you know, when you say a living relationship, you know, for someone to live... Or friendship, more like this. Yeah, way, yeah, look, you know, when he's giving us just not food, you know, he gives us this amazing love that you live off, mm -hmm. you know, uh, then you stop existing and you start living. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a big difference between people who just exist 
And they exist because there's no God in the, in the life. Mm -hmm. You start living when you have God in your life. All right, so when, I, when you say I've got this living relationship with God, it's because I've got Him in my life. So I don't have to exist anymore, I live. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I would like to add because like a friend of mine said, before I was in Medjugorje, I was surviving. And now yeah. I'm thriving in Medjugorje. I found my vocation and what is the connection to God? If you are in love with what you are doing, then you're passionate, then you're full-hearted, what Our Lady says, no? Yeah. Not lukewarm, hot or cold, no? <laughs> kind of like this? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Look, like that's, that, that's the living relationship I have with God because I, uh, he's, he's, I believe I've got His love and He loves me. And, when you have that sort of love in your life, you live, and like you said, you thrive. Yeah. You just don't survive, you thrive, you know, and you thrive really well. And, mm -hmm. and, and you make sure others thrive with you. People see exactly. you and, and they get something off you, you know. Uh, it's like what they say, I'm not funny, but I also make others funny. Yeah. You know, it's not my wit, I make others witty as well. It's like that, you know, I, it's not because I'm, because I'm living, I want to make others see that life I'm living so it's, it's very powerful and you share that love and beautiful and at the end what would you tell people like um, you know a lot of people look for vocation here how did yes. you find your wife what would you tell people what should they do it's such a big decision how 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 how, how did you find and what would you give them as an advice and a good marriage um, okay, I'm sure my wife will be laughing if she sees this <laughs> but uh, yeah? um, go for it the the People, yes, you're right. People come over to 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 seek for vocation. They discern and they come over here to to see if that's the right path. And people become, you know, join and, and become priests and all that. That's one aspect of it. And yes, Medjugorje is a fabulous place where you have to come to 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 decide. And God is here. Is, is, you can feel it. And, and Mother Mary's love is so so so. Um, uh, palatable, you know, you can almost taste the love. People say they can smell roses in Medjugorje, so it's so tangible. It's, yeah, so tangible, yeah. So, perfect place if you want to come and discern your vocation is Medjugorje, you know, absolutely. Why not? Why wouldn't you give your life? Why wouldn't you sacrifice? If that's how you think your life should, 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 you know, go that route, then why wouldn't you give your life to God and go on that route? Mm -hmm. But if you, if you think marriage is your, is, is your, is your path, Again, it's a sacrament matter. This is a sacrament, you know, where you, you know, it's, it's a very blessed sacrament. And, and, and for me and my wife, she always says the, the, the recipe for a good marriage is when my only reason to survive is to make you happy. And when your only reason to survive is to make me happy, then that'd be a perfect marriage. And it took me a long time to understand that. Yeah. You know, it's not about what are you going to do to make me happy. No, no. What am I going to do to make you happy? You know, and if she thinks the same, what can I do to make you happy? When we always have that sort of mentality and outlook in marriage, it'll be a lovely, lovely marriage. Yeah, there won't be any blame. I won't say, why didn't you cook for me? Why didn't you do that? Why? No, it's because I'm then expecting you to make me happy. No, no, no. My job is to make you happy. You know, and that's a fabulous thing, isn't it? To have a lovely, healthy marriage. Another thing she always tells me is, Look, my job is to make sure you go to God. Which means even if I slip a little bit, she'll say, no, let's go to Mass. Let's say the Rosary. And if my job is to make you be there in front of God when you die, then we both are together in that journey. Do you know? I want to make sure we're there. She wants to make me sure I'm there. So we're spiritually kind of bound. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're kind of traveling together in, a, in that sort of a life. And on top of it, if, if, if my job is to make you happy, then it's an amazing combination, isn't it? To, to have a very healthy and, and loving relationship in, in marriage, you know, with God around it. Beautiful. At the end, what would you tell people, maybe why should they come one time to Medjugorje? What is so beautiful? Or just from the heart, what would you say as, to, as a summary of this interview? Look, all put together, um, we all carry crosses in our life. Okay, there's no human being who doesn't have that. All right? In some shape or form, we all have crosses. And if you generally want some sort of a, um, an answer, if, if you're seeking um, I know God's love in your life, you know, if, 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 if you want to kind of, I don't know, pray for someone else, if you want to grieve, if you want, uh, it's just the perfect place. Mother Mary is here. 
she 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 knows your intentions. You know, you just need to come once and and take it from someone who's been here God knows how many times. Um, you will come back. You know, you'll be addicted to money to Medjugorje. Yeah. So the divine you know. hug. Absolutely. You know, and 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 so please do come. You know, bring your crosses with you. you and know. can you say, I would like to, did you make the experience that through suffering and pain you came closer to God? Long yeah, you say that. absolutely. No, you, you can't get any more closer to God when you are at the brink of, you know, giving up. You know, when there's when you hit rock bottom, you know. Maybe, maybe you did before I you did. came here, you know? I did, I was, I was, you know, and, and, and I and I and I, I was I was I was spoiled. In, in the words of Jim Corrin, I was I was spoiled by Mother Mary. Thank you know. that's a place to be spoiled by Mother Mary, <laughs> no? That's magical, yeah. Thank that's you it. so much for Not this sure. beautiful interview. Not sure. Not sure.